Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order, 5.30. Um, any changes to the agenda? There are not. All right. So we're here to talk about the process for hiring a new town administrator. And um, we're, that's, that's a focus of our meeting tonight, is just that, that we have an executive session. And if we finish up early with the new business, um, then we're, we're done and we're waiting around for executive session to start around 6.30. So just FYI. Um, so, Paula, would you like to come up and share with us some of the, uh, some of the thoughts you've had on the hiring process? Sure. Am I, am I surprising you? A little bit. <laughs> oh. I, there hasn't been a lot of communication. I didn't know about the meeting until after the fact. So, I had already, you know, based on just the process, the hiring process that we use in general, to the to my department is um, the process that I'm implementing um, with the TA position. Um, so all of the job ads were posted on Tuesday. I just provide a list of where they were posted if you need that. Um, and then the next thing that I identified is needing you know, to identify the hiring committee. Um, I've received different feedback. Um, so I'm not sure what direction we're going to go with that. So I'm sort of looking for some um, information from the select board. I would rec I have um, employees that I have reached out to that I would recommend um, for the employee hiring committee. But again, I'm not sure. Um, this is my first time working with the select board on the TA position. So just kind of we just need to work through some of the dynamics, I guess. Um, so I do. I have um, five employees that I would recommend I will email those to you because um, I want your, I mean, I guess I can say this Yeah, now. that'd be good. Um, and I do have two of, uh, one of them, I apologize, that I have not heard back from you because she has application. So I um, email Sarah, the town clerk, Tina, the finance director, Chief Luno, Judy, the administrative assistant, and Kevin, the highway superintendent. I've heard back from all of them that they would be pleased to do that except for um, Tina because she's on vacation. Okay. Um, and then the, after that, uh, it would be the interview questions. So I have um, received some information from Travis on some recommendations. I opened it, but I figured those would be the ones that you would add to the list. So I have started to create my own list of questions. Um, and then again, I think it's just working with the select board. Um, to figure out whether you're going to have a list of questions, the list of questions, um, where you're going to gather your questions from. There's been some talk about community involvement. I'm not sure what that looks like. So again, I'm starting to create a list. Um, and then uh, there would be some timelines. So I would share the, there's a, currently a deadline of the 19th of May for the applications to be submitted, the cover letters to be submitted to my department. It was a short timeline. Again, Travis um, communicated with me. I set that timeline just because we're trying to um, have someone in place before Eric leaves. So if we need to extend that deadline, we can absolutely do so. I'm just hoping that maybe we get some solid applicants in prior to that. It's hopeful thinking probably on my part, but I'm starting to receive a few of them. Um, so then it's, uh, I would wait until I, you know, wait until the deadline of the 19th. On the 22nd of May, I would share with all of you all the applications, resumes, private letters. Um, prior to that, we would, I would like to have the list of questions finalized. Um, and then I have created a form that you could use um, when you're reviewing the resume and cover letters, it just basically is a list, and again, um, getting some feedback from the select board, it's a list of qualifications. Um, have the bachelor's degree, has management, um, has budget experience, and then you can go through the applicants and sort of rate them, so then it's easy for you to determine who you <coughs> think we should be interviewing and the ones that we should not invite to the interview. Um, I have, um, my recommendation would be to, for each of you to pick 10 applicants if we get that many. Again, it's hopeful or wishful thinking on my part. 
Um, and then we meet whomever the hiring committee is going to be to compare who we've chosen um, to interview, narrowing it down to six. And then from that six, we interview as the first round, and then we determine who our second round candidates are going to be. We do a second interview. Um, and um, I established some timeline. It would be nice if we could do all of this by June 8th. Um, I don't know, because I like <laughs> I'm trying to push things, I guess, a little a tight timeline so that we can again have someone in place before Eric leaves, but all of this is subject to who we get for applicants, how quickly we I mean this could all we may not be able to um, do any of this. It, it really depends on the applicants that we get. Um, and that's gonna kind of drive that timeline for all those other things. You know, but I think that there are, is work that we can do prior to that, which is getting having a solid list of questions, having the committee um, determined, and then start sort of that dialogue and that communication. Um, having everything go through my office, I think would just streamline everything so that I'm feeding you guys the information. The more involved, I mean, I think it's really important that everybody be you know, this select board work with the hiring committee, but if there are different pieces that everybody's doing, I think it just complicates it. So if everything can be streamlined, I would communicate with um, everyone on the hiring committee, the dates, and just coordinating that's going to be the difficult piece. But, so that's what I have. And then I did pull together all of um, Eric's salary and benefits, because that is something that we need to take under um, sort of and our thought process is if we have somebody that comes in um, and has certain benefits that could be an additional expense to the budget um, that we have not, we currently don't have in the FY23 24 budget. Because I don't want to talk about someone's benefits, but there's potential that that could be twenty or $30,000 more yeah. in the budget. I have a quick question. Um, and this is kind of referencing Travis's um, the form that you sent us has that ever gone out before because it seemed like it was kind of basic information which form though uh just that you sent and it had you know hr experience and it had different categories um was that meant to be a uh, have to go back a document. document. I don't recall that either as part of my email. Okay, I'll get back to you. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. I so just... I wasn't. I wasn't necessarily. There hasn't been a lot of Judy called me spoke today, so there hasn't been a lot of communication between um, the five of you and myself. Um, so I think some of this is creating that expectation. What the select board expectation is um, of me at this point. I sort of have a process that I do with all the departments. It works really, really well. I um, work with the department has to establish the questions. I do the, I distribute all the resumes and information. Um, I work and meet with the department heads to establish the individuals that we're going to invite to interview. And it's worked really, really well. But I don't know, um, again, what, what direction you guys want to go in. Follow um, you're, you would be sending out to the board um, sample questions that you would suggest, and I assume that you'll do that sooner than later. Okay, I have, yeah, I have a pretty uh, a fairly good start. Yep, that would be awesome. I probably have like 25, 30 already. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I will look at yours as well, Travis. Okay. I haven't at this point. I sort of wanted to create my own and not take mm -hmm. away from what you might like to add. So yeah, that's um, fine. some of them might be yeah. similar. Um, but yeah, so I... And in addition to that, um, if you, you would like us to submit back to you some ideas in terms of other questions so that we can sort of wrap around if everybody's in the same, same room on that, um, what's the timeline for, for putting that stuff together tangential to the other dates that you gave us as we move this forward? Yeah, so I um, started my list of questions and my resume evaluation form on Wednesday of last week. And then just hearing some talk, nothing solid or concrete, I sort of put everything on hold until this meeting because sure. I didn't want to go um, mm -hmm. in a direction that <laughs> was going to be determined as a direction that we don't want to go in. 
Um, so I kind of stopped <laughs> waiting for you guys to say yes, go ahead and do the normal process that you do and trusting that I'm going to be able to. So I would like to get this information out to you um, actually by Friday sure. so that we can kind of communicate back and forth about additional questions and your the hiring committee. Um, so then we're ready for when the deadline is for the right. resumes, if we have to extend it, but then we're prepared going forward. And it gives them time for exactly that, for us to go, but I give you a list, you guys give me your updates, I update it, I can communicate with you, I can get the list back out so that when um, the 22nd comes, we are ready to, with that in the committee, I would like that to be done. Yeah, that's great, thank you. Well, Paul, I was, um, I just pulled it up. I was referencing um, what Travis sent us, just so you know what I'm oh, talking the about. Oh, the citizen survey. The citizen survey. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, it looked it's to exactly me like. That's what I stopped for. Okay. Because I yeah. was like, okay, we're going to go down and we're going to do that. Um, it's whole... very different than yeah. okay. the process that I work when I work with um, Chief Luno or Chief Mapes or um, the superintendent. When I work, we don't do that piece of it, so I'm not okay. sure if that was the direction. So, yeah, you've never done a, um, where you send something out. I'm just curious about not the here. process. Okay. Not here. Okay. No, absolutely not. All right. Um, yeah. Something. So, yeah, I didn't know if that was the direction. So that's sort of the direction we're looking for. Or, you know, the brochure that you sent. I don't, I, you know, if you guys want me to stop what I'm doing and, and do that, I'm happy to yeah. do that. But I've got to hand over the other yeah. pieces of my job right now in order to do that. Because we, and okay. please keep in mind, we are trying to hire um, for the police department. We are hiring, right? We, and then I probably had 20, 25 interviews in the last two weeks. Plus, we're hiring for um, the highway department, and we just finished um, hiring positions for the EMS department. So, um, yeah. What do you do in your spare time? <laughs> Works on the policies and procedures for the <laughs> town. So I just, I just, um, I just want to make sure that that's why I guess I have this tight timeline. Um, if, again, if we need to extend the um, application deadline. All the other pieces that I feel like if we could have, if we could work together to have that finalized um, and making decisions like if you're going to go down that route um, of doing a um, public survey okay. or public yeah. input, but if we could have a committee and the question finalized, um, then it just seems more manageable for me to be able to make sure I'm meeting your expectations. Okay. And have that finalized by. I'd like to have it finalized by the 19th. So when I'm sending out every all the um, resumes um, and cover letters to you on the 22nd, that I can send the questions with you at that time. And I know who the hiring committee is so that I can get all the information out um, in one mass email and just. So when you say questions finalized, that would mean you would need input prior to that yes. so, so I feel like we have like if I even was able to I have quite a few questions right um, if I was able to get that out to you by this Friday that gives us all oh, you're next gonna... week to go back and forth okay so that by next Friday whatever that date is the 16th or 17th 19th um it would be all done so open meeting laws would mean we would just be responding to you we wouldn't be responding all correct no, because I would just be compiling the information that you're giving me and updating the list, and then I would be sending it all out and asking okay. to the entire time committee. Yep. Yeah. Right. So a couple of thought, questions and thoughts. Um, obviously, the ad that went out would be for a town administrator. Has there been any thought or about potentially given, that's why I understand there's a number of openings around the state right now. Any thought put into perhaps hiring an interim town administrator? So yeah. Judy and I have spoken about it today. Again, that's that feedback that I need from um, the five of you. So I'm going to reach out to the LCT. Uh, I did reach out to Jill after we spoke um, just about the um, meeting items, but I will see if they. Um, I mean, we can send. We can do another app. Mm -hmm. As an interim, and see what we get from that. 
Um, maybe there will be candidates out there, you know, individuals that would be looking to do that, that have retired, whatever, um, you know, that might have an interest. Um, if you're going in the direction of the town manager, um, my recommendation, if, if that is not the direction we're going to go in the next 12 months, then um, it seems like that's a real large learning curve for an interim. Yeah. So I think if, if you're going to go into that direction, we really need to think about um, where that's going to put us in that first, in that interim period, I guess, because they're going to be an interim learning, um, you know, building relationships, learning about our town, the town plan, you know, public transportation, housing, infrastructure, there's a lot to learn, and then we're going to go to a town manager. I'm not saying that I don't, I disagree, because I'm all about the town manager position. I just, that might be a longer process than what we're looking at. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. That's on my list, and I don't know how much we need to talk about a town manager tonight, but certainly that's going to come up in discussions here probably sooner than and that sooner be, than we think. And maybe that's the um, how we gear our questions and what we're looking for, even though it's town administrator position currently, that we are identifying town manager skill set because as we've identified the difference between the town administrator and town manager is really the hiring and fire pieces of it so you know maybe we could move forward with a town administrator within a year turning that person and position into a town manager position so um not that we need to do it the way we've always done it but have you are you familiar with how Eric was hired, what the process was then? Just to, I was not just involved to, in that. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Just so we can. Yeah, I, I, I know that there was a select board committee, and Judy and others could probably speak to this better than I. I was not involved. Okay. Um, what I have heard from some of the staff that I you know, talked to is that there wasn't really a set, it went well, but there wasn't like a set um, question. Um, it was it was handled you know, very different than what I'm recommending um, the process be for hiring, um, but I'm pretty stringent with the way that I do things. So I don't like to, I don't mind swaying from that. I'm happy to do whatever, but I also don't like chaos. So um, I don't want structure to this. You don't want um, chaos in the hiring <laughs> process. <laughs> no. Oh, oh is there? Um, uh, excuse me. Is there yeah. a timeline? Just if if we start. And maybe we're, if this is way too early, but if it looks like we're not getting any applicants, do, do we need to kind of set a timeline of when we make the decision to yeah, so, not go so forward? So I'm not seeing anything in that first, that first week. Uh -huh. um, probably by Monday, Tuesday next week, I would just extend it. Okay. Um, because there's certain deadlines with the newspaper. Okay. Um, the LCT is pretty easy just to go on. And then a couple okay. of the other um, okay. platforms that we've used. So yeah, um, it's we mind. have received um, four at this point. Three of them are out of state. One is in state. Oh, interesting. Well, uh, um, <clears throat> the uh, when we went through this um, in Waterbury, hiring a town manager, you know the the interim piece was more of a default piece that we sent out. You know uh, the advertisements. We waited for resumes to come in and letters of interest. And in this situation, um, you know, if we don't get either qualified people or we're not happy with the, with the, the um, number of applications we're seeing, um, would you work with the LCT perhaps to uh, sort of turn to um, an interim position? sort of as a stop gap and get us where we need to be, what would be your process? Yeah, I think that if we're identifying that we're not, if we're not getting solid applicants or qualified applicants, then it's definitely um, something that I would communicate with you as well as with Eric, just to make sure that I'm kind of stopping the process that we're currently doing and see where we need, to, what direction we need to go. Because clearly we can't, if, it, if we're not getting that qualified applicant pool, then I'm going to need to change the direction. Yeah. And if it means that we do an interim, um, because we also don't want that position to be vacant, <laughs> somebody has to fill that responsibility, right. which currently it falls on um, a very specific 
person. Um, so I just, yeah, I would not want that workload to shift. I mean, we'd have to figure out where the workload's going to shift because there are right. decisions that need to be made, right. which means a lot more um, is going to be presented to the select board for approval because yeah. we don't yeah. have anybody um, making that operational decision. Yeah, and we're on a really condensed timeline. Yes, so we are. Hence why I did the 19th Travis. I, 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 I get appreciate it. Yeah. the email. I was <laughs> just like, what? Let's quick turn around. And again, it is really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. It's good to be optimistic. Yeah. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Have you spoken to Rick McGuire at VLCT at all? No, I have not. I think he's the executive search consultant for them now. He was okay. the he was Williston's town manager for like 22 years, retired recently. Gotcha. Uh, I don't cool. know if he could provide some. No, I can absolutely. Along with what I, I reached out to Jill. Yeah, She's like my Jill friend. would be my other And then I, I um, often just go on and do a Q&A, like, like search on their website. So I tried to get back to Jill and utilize the website. Um, on my own, but I'd say, yeah, everything I do is through Jill. She's very responsive. Jill's awesome. But, yeah, she is awesome, and she um, goes the extra mile. She so, does. Um, but I will, I will absolutely reach out. So just out of interest, then, what was the process last time? I don't remember how many candidates we had. I don't know if you remember it all, Eric. Uh, there were 40 applicants. You interviewed six candidates. Oh, Sarah, you want to talk? I'm really mostly interested in the structure of the committee. So, but, me too. Yeah. So I don't remember all of it, and I don't know if I saw actually the 40 applicants or not. I don't think I did. I think the select board looked through the 40 applicants. I don't remember looking at 40 of them. I don't know. No. Somebody looked through 40 applicants. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I was part of that. I think um, so. It was all five select board members. Um, it was four. Oh, right, four, sorry, because Eric was one of them. Um, myself as town clerk treasurer, Tina as finance director, and Richard Keith as chief of police also sat in. Um, if I'm being frank, it was chaotic. The former administration did not want to set um, um, questions ahead of time, so it was we just kind of asked questions. I don't yes. remember if the three of us staff members had a vote. Did we have a vote? I don't know if you had a vote. I know you asked questions. We, we asked questions and we were there, and I think we were able to give our opinion, but I feel like I don't, I don't remember don't. having an actual vote. I think the select board has final say on hiring, firing, and the town administration, yeah. the administrator's process, so it would have been advisory versus yeah, I think, vote. I think the three of us were there for advisory. That's why I don't think I saw all of the applications. I think that I was just invited. Some the, Someone went interviews. through them, because I know I didn't look at 40 applications. I don't think I did. I think we interviewed six mm. or five or six. There were two from Maine. There was mm -hmm, three, four. There were definitely five. Definitely, yeah. Maybe six. Yeah. It was two nights. We didn't, we didn't do a second round like Tina is suggesting, which would have been Paula. probably good. Or, I'm sorry, Paula. Sorry. <laughs> so, I, yeah, you're answering some of my questions. So, I've just, I guess my concern is about the size of the committee. And, you know, we've already talked about, you know, who might make that final decision. I mean, clearly, right now, we have the authority to make that decision. We are the we are the body to do that, but we could, we can always decide to extend that decision to others as well. It doesn't have to be just the five of us, I would think. But I'm not suggesting that it should should be limited. It should go beyond the five of us. Um, but if we did go with the suggestion of these five employees and the five of us, that's ten people on the committee. I do like the idea of. Um, a community member or two as well. So now we're talking 11 or 12 people, but it does become, it becomes large. And I just want to throw that out there as a concern. I've been on larger committees and, you know, they, we, we need to be a little bit careful about 
Sure. How big we make it so that it doesn't become an inefficient the body. And Paula has stepped up here. Thank you. Were you suggesting that we do all five of these, or this was a pool of people we would select? I was suggesting all five for okay. various reasons, just because Tina has a finance background. Um, and can really, okay. you know, address those finance questions, and I do as well. Um, but you can, okay. based on someone's answer, you can really determine whether they know. <laughs> Truly what they're talking about. Uh -huh. um, and I'd, like, I'd, like, I'd like to go into that because that was really important when we did the interviews because different people, knowledge. Chief, the Chief, oh. and, and Tina, and different people had different aspects that they could bring into us that we're not familiar with. Exactly. Right. And that's why um, Kevin actually, um, Eric had recommended Kevin and then Chief Luno um, because he. Is actually filled in for his town administrator in his absence on vacation, so I feel like that's important. And then, of course, um, Judy, the administrative assistant, um, because she works very closely, so she knows, in, in my opinion, more of what that position entails than probably anyone else in this building um, or in the organization. And because of her um, background outside of the town of, of Morristown. Um, and then Sarah being the town clerk, um, and then also someone that that position doesn't supervise. So there is some you know, reasoning behind why I recommend it. My concern with the community um, involvement is um, if we're gonna do the um, interviews in executive session, which is what would be recommended, right. um, how the rules, and Judy and I talked about it, how the rules apply to those individuals because they're, um, they're under probably a different set of rules, and that's a, that's an area I don't know um, for these individuals. And I also, the longer the committee, just they add time. So having ten individuals, I don't know what size you work with historically. I'm like right around five for a hiring committee. Mm -hmm. Four to five, you start getting um, larger hiring committees, and it's. Everybody's going to have different needs and wants and expectations and um, see the applicants differently. So I just yeah, has I anybody think, oh excuse a me a large pool I or think, a large community. I think the other piece of that is is that it, um, how do you decide if you had 15 people from the community that wanted to serve on the committee and you right. decided on X amount of people, you know then that's a whole another interview process where you have to sit down and pick and choose which I think adds a whole nother layer of, you know, trying to bring this committee. And I, I'm, I think <clears throat> if we had, <clears throat> excuse me, six months <clears throat> to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I actually really enjoyed this. <laughs> um, if we had six months to do this, it yeah. might take on a different feel. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But because of the condensed timeline, uh, maybe an option to look at is to, rather than to select X amount of people to serve from the community, allow anybody in the community to submit uh, questions to you or to the board mm -hmm. to be shared um, and give an opportunity to anybody that's interested to, to do that. And we would include as many of those questions that were redundant to things that we were gonna ask um, in that interview process so that the community would have involvement. Um, they just wouldn't be sitting in the room. So that might be an option to look at. I mean, there's, as you're saying, as you're talking about this, um, I wonder if there is, um, you know, maybe you have a website, and I would have to communicate with the Judy because I cannot post things on the town website. But if we have an initial list of questions, like we set a deadline for that, and then we post it, and then if the community um, sees that there are questions that we haven't covered in that list, giving them the opportunity from this date to this date to submit questions. I'm just trying to, as I'm standing here thinking about this, so um, I may change my mind to say this, but it's just a way to get those questions out and involve the community without having, you know, 50 emails coming in can be an awful lot for me to manage right now with everything that's going on. Just want to remind people that there is a lot going on. Um, I mean, it seems to make sense. 
Yeah. I don't know if that works. But and it will. Beyond questions, we could do some sort of community survey, like the one that I sent out, where we, right. we seek feedback from the community on what are they looking for in their next town administrator, what, what values are important to them, what backgrounds are important to them, um, and that maybe the board could weigh some of that in our decision making process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't want to make this decision in a vacuum, but yeah. I, you know, I think there's some balance here based on the timeline um, that we could be a little creative in terms of how we accomplish that. So I think that's exactly what I'm looking for from the select board, is I have my sort of process, but anything outside of that, how we're going to approach it and just make sure that it's manageable so it doesn't become too much for any of you or too much for me. Um, so maybe working with the website, I don't know what we do. Can do like a, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm just, you can do a, like a Google form survey it would be a free tool we could utilize. I was just speaking with um, Sarah, who um, was involved in a Stowe hiring situation, but it also brought up uh, the process of when you go through a, a normal business, you, you know, it's usually a tiered system. Um, you know, and that's very different though. You have a lot more time, but I'm wondering if possibly we have um, an advisory committee with, you know, lots more employees, maybe a couple of community, I'm not sure, but strictly in an advisory um, that do a draft and send their recommendations and then are to the formal hiring committee. So it's kind of like a, not a vetting, but just a different, the more eyes you have, I think, in this situation would be good. I don't know if that could be I mean, a consideration. Honestly, kind of where my head was going, Laura, is yeah. uh, I don't know as if, you know, we talked two rounds of interviews. Do the committees for the first and second rounds need to be the same? Could we have staff and maybe a member of the public or two do the initial interview, say it's six candidates, and narrow it down to three? And then the board interviews those three and the board makes the final decision. I, I don't know as if it needs to be the same committee for both rounds of interviews. I mean, I wouldn't mind all six with both committees. I just think, the, you know, especially in a small town, there's having as many people, especially our staff and people that are going to be working with these people, have them involved and, and hear, you know, hear their their side of it because they're going to see it from a very different perspective than we are. Yeah, employees definitely need yeah. to be involved. Yeah. Well, and their department heads and they're going to have to work day in exactly. day out so, with the new town of yeah. But I think when it starts getting to 10, 11 people on one committee, it gets unwilling. That, that's too yeah. large. Yeah, but I think that might be, and of course our staff, I would love to hear if you think that's a, Paula, is that a doable or are you like, does that sound really un Tenable and man <laughs> Have you ever done that before? I have, I have to. I have different committees uh -huh. um, for the first round versus second round. Okay. Um, yep, I have that. Not here. Okay. Because um, yeah. there was no process here. Okay. Um, whatsoever, and I feel like there's a really solid process in place now. And like I said, it's it's there's been no hiccups. I feel oh, I'm going to touch with the recipients, <laughs> um, yeah. and ask them how they feel it's running. Maybe um, Maybe it's more, I have no idea, but um, I don't know. So I'd have to think about that. Okay. I just, again, um, whatever direction we go in, I just want to make sure that it's manageable. Exactly. Um, and that it's, it doesn't become chaos. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, that the focus is finding the right candidate mm -hmm. and not, you know, a bunch of personalities. Yes. Yeah. You know, trying to work through the weeds, if you will. Yes. If that makes sense at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd say I home. do like the idea of, a, a, you know, the first round of interviews, there being a larger group with maybe the, you know, five, the five department heads you've suggested, us, and again, maybe, maybe some community representation there. But my point is that once we do narrow it down to three, yeah. that it would be us okay. doing think, that interview. I think that makes sense. And at that point, we're going to receive a lot of feedback from department heads, a lot of feedback from employees. So we're going to know going into that final round who, you know, what the concerns are in regards to those last three interviews, right. whatever they might be. Um, so it's, it's not like that would be, you know, taken out of the process. Their, their opinions and thoughts aren't going to be taken out of the process. Yeah. Right. They're that's, going to be that's my concern is that we get and if that's the direction you want to take with Garth in regards to, you know, the community involvement, you can narrow it down to the 10 and then 
in the community and you know whoever you identify at that point. But I just again I, I find this to be very like how many people you get yes. involved. Yes. Because then it becomes you know you're you're working on the personnel <coughs> on that committee versus again finding that you know really focused on the applicant because that's really what we mm -hmm. want our focus to be is. Mm -hmm. I'm someone who like, needs to process the information, and this is something I hadn't thought about, and something in my gut is just doesn't feel right, just having a diff two different groups interviewing, um, because I highly value the expertise we have in our department heads and in the people who work here, because they work with the town administrator every single day. We work with the town administrator twice a month. Maybe we interact a little bit more, but not we're not really working with that person the way all of the employees are. When I have used two different panels, and I don't know how this if you want to speak to your experience with this, but I feel like I've had the feedback and the outcomes of having the same um, two panels has worked well. Um, the different panels has always had a different outcome, and I feel like if I could go back to you know mem my memory and um, how many of those were good decisions and how many of those were bad decisions having those two different panels, like the longevity of the employee that we chose. Um, yeah, I think I would probably go with you, Judy, and say like the same the same group. Um, because they're gonna you're gonna have different questions or you should have different questions for your second interviews. Mm -hmm. um, you sometimes can see, you know, there's few individuals that were a part of the first um, interview see something different and that person that they thought that they were going to go with and the second interview they actually choose someone different because they they, they answer different mm -hmm. questions um, and there was a different feel and right. um, in the second interview people tend to become more comfortable so you start to see um, some of their real personalities so I would lean towards what you're saying to you the same the best I mean, I can, yeah, yeah, I can speak to sort of how we do with an Essex. Um, we often do do variable panels, um, but typically have some consistency amongst the two. I'm, I, for example, am typically in both, both rounds. Um, you know, I'll use like our town planner is a recent one. Um, so first round, you know, we would have the community development director as the direct supervisor, zoning administrator as, you know, a direct colleague invite the public works director because they work very closely with planning and zoning in terms of like development review. There are town engineer as well. So sort of, you know, go about it that way. Second round would typically be like myself, probably the department head again, but then the town manager and the deputy town manager. And then, um, but certainly then that whole group after the two rounds of interviews reconvenes and we all talk together about how we felt, what we saw, what we observed. We do have you know one or two people who are in both rounds to sort of identify trends, changes between rounds. Um, I think I can go both ways, but just mm -hmm. to give some perspective on sort of how I've done it. And then, did you have a final, you know, like because kind of how I'm envisioning it is that you had the two groups who interview all six, and then between those two groups, we narrow it down to three to get to the final. You know, because that you want. I do agree with we want to have a second interview. Whoever's hiring should be interviewing these people twice. So that was my thought process. It makes it a little bit more lengthy, but I do think this is an incredibly important position um, that I, I think we should spend some time doing it correctly. I, I, I guess I, you know, looking at, you know, sort of the intimacy of this community, the timeline that we're looking at, um, and hopefully that we'll have some viable applicants that come. Um, I guess I, I sort of land on the collaboration between Paula and Judy in terms of how we would approach the hiring process. <coughs> it would be consistent groups between um, the first and second interviews with department heads and the select board. I think in my mind the biggest debate moving forward would be if we include the community members, how we, how we get there. And how we choose that those person or that that person um, moving forward. Um, that that would be my recommendation. My concern there is just having you know, if, and if we involve the public, you know, ten to fifteen people in each interview round is going to be unwieldy. It will be too many people. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, that, yeah, that, that's part of part of my thought process of doing maybe staff and a couple of residents round one, board round two, is to try to sort of just make it more tenable. And then the other thing is, you know, obviously when we talk about it tonight, is you know, it's one of the bad news, but if we don't have any applicants and we aren't able to, you know, put in even an interim person in place, um, we need to have a plan going forward. So. Um, you know, prior to the June 30th deadline, mm -hmm. that's not here. I think um, mm -hmm. the select board needs to be prepared to um, have some kind of backup plan and be just put on the Right. Would but there be? We're going to find somebody. Um, it's going to be great. And uh, we're going to be a wonderful team of um, on the hiring committee, and we're just going to be good. But in case it's not. Yeah. Would there be any internal interest in being interim town administrator, or would it most definitely be an external? I don't think there okay. is anybody um, at this time, but I can put that I'm just going to say that also begs the question of um, if anybody on this board is considering uh, moving up, should they? Should you be in the process of? Uh, is it a conflict of interest to be deciding on the process? And I don't know if anybody's interested, but no, you know, <laughs> <laughs> me either. But I just you don't know, and I was like, I just He's as, experienced what's happened. <laughs> uh, well, and just that we're are Sorry. setting up the process. Would it be considered a if you're going to apply? Would it be part of yeah? Would it be a conflict of interest if you're going to apply to be part of the process? On, Deciding the process. So my take on that is, if you're going to apply for the position, then you remove yourself from the process. Thank I feel you. like that's a huge conflict of interest. Thank you. That's I, that's was my I question. I concur. Yes. Okay. You know, by my May nineteenth. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then they, you just would not be part of. You know. But you don't have any. You don't think that, uh, being involved in deciding the process is a conflict of interest? Uh, I, I well. Um, like I think deciding on the process, but deciding on the applicants that are moving forward to okay. be interviewed, that whomever that individual is oh, of course. Up, yeah. should not be a part of yeah. that decision. No, no, I'm just thinking of is deciding the process of how they're high, how that person is appointed. Is that a conflict of interest if you are then going well, to turn it's around? it's no different than somebody yeah. who's going to be applying <clears throat> and be on right now and, okay. and be getting the, you know, the hiring information, yeah. so I don't think that's a conflict, okay. but I do feel like choosing the applicants that are going to be oh, yeah. yes. to yes. interview. Yes, that's, be, that's pretty cool. So one other thought in terms of public engagement, and I'm honestly not sure I even like it, um, but I, I only know because I know someone that applied for Winooski's town manager job when it was vacant recently. Um, they had like the two or three finalists come in and actually do public presentations in open session at a board meeting. I certainly see the downside to that, particularly if they've not notified their current employer that they're looking elsewhere. There's, <laughs> yeah, there are there are cons there. We, I think we would you know, need their consent, need to be upfront with everyone from the get go. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I don't even know if I like it, but it would be a way to at least get these candidates in front of the public. The board could then maybe have another meeting a week down the road to make the final decision, get public feedback in that time frame. Be an opportunity for residents to to see me get a feel for a couple of finalists and then provide feedback to the board just as another option i'll just float it out know, there the last time we did this there were several people who didn't hadn't notified their boards yeah. that they were interviewing so i, I will say that personally i have always notified my employer when i've been seeking outside employment because i think it's the right thing to do and if you have a good employer they should understand why you're looking to move on but that's not always the case not always. it is not I was always the case wasn't in my head. We're going to we're gonna take questions. And and yeah, definitely not always the case. And it's a small state, so we have to be aware of that. All right. So it's an issue with resident involvement, too, though. You know, if we bring even one or two members of the public in, then these candidates' names are likely going to leak out. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's tricky. So I'm going to, I'm going to, we have some questions that are coming up, but so I want to open it up after we finished our discussion. Do we have a hard stop at 6.30? Um, no. Okay, good. But I think our, but close. Okay. Yeah, we warned it for a 6.30 stop time. Okay, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. um, uh, so we have, we have a, is there any way, um, Paula,
you can this out for us too. I have, so I, I do you mean what I was sharing earlier. Yes, because I start so I start I, writing it. Then yeah, so I, I will down. change some of the bridges because it's sort of a checklist that I was going to send to you, but then I wasn't sure what direction you were going in, so then I made it about my checklist, but I will oh. I will change this up a little bit. So you're talking about June June eighth being a what was the June 8th date? So I just, in this, you'll see that um, the second interviews, I recommended um, that those be conducted no later than June 8th. Okay. And I mean, if we can crunch it in into the, if we can do the first and second sooner than that, that would be great, but just because we're trying to push it up, you know, make it as soon as possible, uh, conduct the interviews as soon as possible. Right. So that we have some extra. Um, Mm -hmm. It's June sixth, correct? Correct. <clears throat> so, and that's a really tight. I think it should be back yeah, we now. can't. We really it's can't a really do tight timeline. <coughs> I'm just trying to um, take advantage of the care of being in his position till the thirtieth to do mm -hmm. the shadowing piece because right. um, I don't feel like that. I think that happened last time, and I truly believe that. that right. Yeah. Yes. Agree. Especially yeah. in this type of position. And with the fifth, I mean, the fifth, this room is going to be set up for voting and the sixth of the voting. So those two days are out, the Monday, Tuesday, just as mm -hmm. information. No, that's important. Yeah. And it's coordinating a room with schedule, too. You know, there's individuals that are on the hiring committee that may have vacations, some of you may have vacations. So when you have 10 people, then you start adding 12, 15 people, it's even more um, of a conflict with the schedules of trying to manage getting everyone together. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So I would assume that we should decide tonight how we're going to move forward in terms of the interview process, whether it's going to be department heads and the select board and we solicit, um, you know, whether it's through a, um, you know, a survey or some other method, um, whether it's going to include um, you know, the public, and if so, how do we handle that in terms of advertising applications to be on this panel and setting up interviews? Um, I think that, you know, we need to make a decision tonight on how that moves forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, in light of, you know, what um, Paula has outlined for us, because you're going to be gone next Monday uh, for that meeting, so I think that we need to have the process in place tonight so at this point we have five board members we have the five employees you've suggested yeah. plus yourself yeah. mm -hmm. so that's a lot of yeah, that's true yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things that when we just spoke Chris about um, the applications or you know letters of interest cover letters and resumes being sent out to community members again that makes me a little bit yeah. nervous we have no, we can control um, expectations with staff. Yeah. Um, we can control your own expectations amongst each other, but we cannot control the information that is shared. So if we are releasing these um, resumes to the public and that share, and then we got the confidentiality piece that is, you know, somebody shares it or you know, post something on a front porch forum, so and so is applying for the town administrator and you know, they're not qualified or they're overqualified, whatever. Um, I'm really concerned about that. Would would, um, would it be feasible, um, and this might be a legal question, <clears throat> to have uh, potentially two community members sit in on the interviews but not participate? So we wouldn't be sending out resumes, but they would only be technically witnesses? But you still have, there's the... There's the confidentiality yeah. question there. The same question. We, have, yep. we have a responsibility in the yep, executive understood. session that we're not supposed to, and I think there are mm -hmm. possibly are consequences if we do. Yeah, and uh, consequences to employees. employees where we right. don't have that control over. Yeah, so if you're, if you're really set on having that community involvement, I would go back to which Travis is recommending. Yeah. And that is a survey or you know what you're looking for or, or you know the community members 
submitting questions, but I, it feels really uncomfortable for me to think about us sending out applicant information um, because again, yeah. we have no control. I would, you know, I suggested I never, this. Go ahead. I would never suggest sending it out. Um, I, and I agree. I don't think that's a good idea. Just to throw out another quick one, if, to bring in, you know, an outside. We do have former employees and former select board members <coughs> who are highly qualified. Would that um, be feasible to? quote, get somebody like that that's a... But they're also considered... Yeah, they're also, still pub they're they're public. Still, they're public at that point. They're not an elected official. Yeah, they're a higher not affiliated with the town at this yeah. point. We're going right. to have a hard time. So I yeah, threw out this so idea of engaging members of the community early on here tonight. And mostly just because of the experience that I've had in doing this in the past when we've been in the school systems, when we've been hiring superintendents and we've been hiring yeah. top administrators, mm -hmm. those principals and whatnot. We've always tried to engage members of the public however as I'm listening to as I'm listening to this I'm, I'm thinking about our tight timeline timeline in particular we had a lot more time to do this than we, we do yeah. now I I am getting swayed by this survey idea as well I think it is it is a way to get the information that we need we can certainly build it into the question process so my question is when, if we were to do a survey and get public input, when would you need? When would you That's need that be information? My to you. Who is a S A P. Is that yeah. going to be me no. that creates that public well, I would, survey? Well, I I'd be and willing to. That? I'd be willing to help out with somebody. I'd be happy to help it's, too. Yeah, like, I've got templates from Essex as well that we could. Two of us off. could do yeah. it if the board would allow us to do it. And I just, just don't want to sign up for something that I honestly. No. You've got enough on your plate. Yeah. That's my concern. Yeah. I don't want to drop the ball, if you will, no. No. Um, and disappoint the public or the select board. So you've, yeah, I, I, Paula, you've got enough on your plate right now. Yeah, no. So the second interviews are, are tentatively, this isn't set in stone, and June 8th. I was going to say, it did, that's just a, I just was like going down the calendar trying to say, okay, if. If that all the stars align, <laughs> there's rainbows and butterflies. Yeah. So do you have a do you have a target do you have a, a target on the calendar at all for first interviews? I it would be that last week of May because we need to because I will be submitting all the um, resume and cover letters to you on Monday the twenty second would be my my goal and maybe we could do first interviews that end of that week. Twenty ninth something like that. Twenty ninth yeah. thirtieth. Yeah. 29 is no. Memorial Day. Yeah, so you have yeah. 30, 30. So that would not work. And I actually, I first. was going to oh, be yeah. out that last week, but I've adjusted my vacation schedule. So there are two days that I will not be available. There's one day that I absolutely will not come off compromise with. So if we were to, uh, <laughs> a couple of us were to get together and put a survey together. And you would have the information sent to the two of you and you would process it? Judy? Yeah, I wanted to just say one thing. Oh. Just would encourage you, there is a town of Morristown Google account. And so in order to keep it through the town, yeah. it can be created and I can share it with you too to be editors, but it would still be town as opposed to a personal, yeah. you yes. know what I mean? Yes. Still that's just all, to keep it through the That's clean. And honestly, yes. I'll probably, if we're doing, you know, I don't want this affiliated with my personal Gmail account. I would no, probably, no, no. I okay. would probably create a Gmail account with my Morristown email. You can, you can do that. You can create a free Google account with any email address. Yeah. Or we could do what you need. Just but even if we're being editors, we'll need a Google account for her to assign us the editing. Well, if there's a, a Google well, you account, don't need your, you can use your town of Morristown email okay. to go in and do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need Google. Okay. Yeah, Good and you can okay. create the survey document through yeah. Google Docs. But um, I encourage you to look at Travis, the survey he sent, because it, it, it answers the basic, yeah. you know, the uh, base, the ground root stuff that we need you know, the information we need yeah. so we and really that, are just looking for yeah all the materials i sent out essex worked with a consulting firm mri and municipal resources yeah. inc so i mean all that was developed by them yeah so are you how are you feeling the two of you and the two of you what we've discussed so far looking at a google search survey you're talking about yeah um trying to follow the outline the timeline that tina has set up 
so sorry. I keep doing that. I'm so sorry. Um, the Paula has set up. Um, was there something else? And then the hiring committee that she has suggested. Would you like a motion? Well, I want to get. Yeah, I guess then we can yeah, have I mean, a discussion. Yeah, I mean, you get some public feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And just keep in mind that, that that date may need to be extended. It's, that those were dates it's fluid. Based on yeah. Like all applicants in the PMS getting a yes. to pull from, and then everything being sent out on the 22nd, the list of questions being completed, which I can do that and get that out. The timeline I'll send out to you. So I think it's just that survey piece. Um, and I'm happy to do, you know, yeah, I would definitely want you to take a look at it if you could, just there because I want I'd like value your input on that. The other would be is you set a plan, and we don't have one. Um, but the thought process is that looking at the calendar, thinking we may have to call another special board meeting to to develop a plan <coughs> the week of the twenty second. If we don't get the applicants that we need. Is that what, would you recommend that? I would extend, uh, no, I don't think oh, that just we extend would need it. to, I would just extend okay. the date and right. let you yeah. know, probably go out honestly another two weeks. Um, there is that, that possibility that we're not going to be able to backfill this in time. Okay. And I do, you know, I guess the message needs to be that even mm -hmm. if we have to extend it, it's more important that we find the right applicant than it is to put somebody in there yeah. um, to fill the absence of the town mm -hmm. Good. administrator. Yes. But I would just extend the date and then revise the timeline. So that could be a process for um, hopefully not, but it could end up being a process. Really, it's going to depend on the applicant for what we get. Okay. Well, I'm happy with this 11 person committee that we've talked about and <coughs> in the survey to get that public input. Yeah, and I yeah. think the results of that survey could maybe to some extent be factored into sort of how we evaluate applicants and how we how we evaluate the interviews and the candidates. I mean, that would be the point of the survey is to, sure. to take the public and feedback. And questions into, to ask. Yeah. yeah. I, I just I really feel like there needs to be um, two committees with a final third. I know it's drawing it out, but I just think this position is way too important. And just having an applicant walk into 11 people, I think is daunting. So I, I really feel like there needs to be two, um, the two initial committees with the third being the uh, final. <coughs> the second interviews pared down. Uh, is, that makes sense, I'm sorry. Two initial committees interviewing the same pool of folks, then pairing it down to uh, three that go to the final interview hiring committee. I think is, because um, again, this is such an important position. Um, you know, I have concerns that uh, the fact that it is an administrator position, that given information that Paula presented, um, you know, there don't seem to even be a lot of towns our size that current still have administrators. So I just, I, I'm somewhat afraid that we may not attract people. Um, because they want a mat quote manager's position. Um, so that's my concerns. There's a couple of people on Zoom. Did you, do we want to make a, do we want to do, go to the public or do we want to make a, have a, a we've got people that might have I think questions. Paula okay. wanted to address what I just said. Oh, no, actually yeah. I want to address, um, because one of the questions that's going to come up and I've already received um, an email yesterday um, from a gentleman who is out of um, Massachusetts about the salary. So, um, our, yeah, it's tricky. I mean, there's no range out there. Um, you know, we have what is budgeted, which is the current uh, administrator's salary. So that is something that we need to take into consideration. For instance, this individual is willing to relocate, but and he has experience. Um, but That's I need to also be able to give that information out. So, um, right, we all know what the current town administrator needs. So, am I locked into that? Because keeping in mind, again, if the benefits change, there are certain benefits that our current town administrator has um, that cost us a lot less than an individual coming in here with a family. Just I, I was not thinking. saying that you know we don't want we do want that, but um, that can be 
around twenty-five thousand to thirty thousand dollars more. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. So I sort of need some guidelines. You need that tonight. Yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be fluid. I mean, you can't you can't discriminate on an applicant based on the benefit election yeah. they need to make. No. And, I mean, that's just there's nothing we can do and about you that. You don't even know that until after you. Correct. You know, yeah. 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 Y
Craig said, uh, that public involvement is a must. I think there must be at least one or two people somehow involved in this process directly and not just folks filling out a form. And if that means we have two committees and maybe on that first go round, there's only three members of the select board on there and then in the second round, everybody's on there. But I think it's imperative that there are members of the public involved directly somewhere in the process. Um, Dom has mentioned that when hiring supervisory positions, if I heard you correctly, members of the public were involved in that. If the supervisory union can figure it out, I think you both can figure it out. Yeah. Get creative, put some time into it, don't shortchange the public. Um, I'm curious where the job is posted. Um, currently, I've seen it on uh, our local papers and BLTC. I have not seen it in seven days. I have not seen it on Indeed. I have not seen it on monster.com or whatever these are. So I'm curious where else are we advertising this position um, to get the best core of applicants? Um, and then finally, uh, when the applicants do come in, applications, are they going to be blind applications? Are we going to be removing all of the personally identifiable information from them so that every person has a fair chance and that there are no implicit biases included in that, which is something that I would also uh, be an advocate of. Thanks. Thank you. I'm going to go with um, uh, Carla. That's uh, Cynthia. 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 Yeah. Yes, thank you. I hope you didn't hear me well. I, I, I want to just reiterate that, uh, the timeline that you have is, oh, I, I don't understand why we're rushing to get this this job, uh, uh, get it hired so fast when it is so important. Your, your VLCT has this timetable set for doing this, and they have 16 weeks on it. I will send you that, and you're telling, and you're only sending out the ads until the 19th. How many, how many people, uh, how, how many people get a chance to look at that? And then you have this this time line to have it before Eric leaves. Uh, I'm sure Eric, uh, if if it came to that, would be willing to to stay a little longer if it took to get the right person for his job. And it, uh, and the ads, where are the ads right now? Uh, he's right. You, you've got to put these out. And uh, and the, I looked at our ND today, and there's no ad there. And, and the last thing you're rushing is to have it done, to do your interviews, which is really good. You're fat, quick, fast, and, and hurry it up and it's going to be a mistake made. And then you get the ideal candidate and he takes a month because he's got to give notice that he's leaving his job. So you've got to slow this down. This this timetable is way out of whack. And, and uh, I hope you can somehow adjust that, especially the beginning of these, uh, to end the ad and starting the, the interview process less than a month. It's just unreasonable. And I will push for two people to be two citizens. And I think you've got two great people sitting in your audience right now that can fill this part. And all you have to do to tell these people that 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 there's a conflict, that, that their confidentiality matters. And if they want to sit on any of these boards, they have to abide by them also. And I'm sure they will because they're totally professional uh, people. And they they know the ramifications. And I again I cannot just emphasize that you're going too fast for such an important job that's gonna that's gonna this town is relying on your moves here to get us or an administrator that will take us in in through these difficult times. You rush to it, you're you're looking for disaster. Uh, thank you. That's all I have. Okay. <clears throat> so I guess uh, at the moment, uh, Morristown, I guess I get to be the third person to say largely the same thing. Uh, I see close to zero possibility of coming up with a result that we can move into the future with 
especially given the turmoil that there's been and, and, and the history of difficult decisions by this board, which had members that are not here today, but still, there's a certain momentum of how decisions have been made. Um, I, don't, I don't know to what extent you're aware, but there's a, a fair, an increasingly well-informed chat group by email, and the general consensus is that we probably want someone not that closely aligned with the town so far. Some, some major new directions have to be looked at. Uh, I liked, I think it was Don's suggestion of, if it comes to that, possibly having an interim individual to fill the position uh, if it's decided that we're just not functioning. So it's been decided that the town might well function given the experience and uh, skill of the operating staff, uh, the, the, the department heads, it might well be we can do just fine. If it seems like we cannot, it might be possible to hire someone with the understanding that it's an interim position and make no long-term contractual commitments. Um, second thing I want to address is it was suggested to do a survey I kind of thought we might be going in the direction of having some community members that we can, about whom we can generally agree are, are well qualified to hold opinions on how to hire for an executive position. We are hiring, uh, we're hiring basically an executive position here. I mean, how many people have hired um, for positions that are senior to their own position. Uh, can you raise your hand if you have participated in hiring some uh, hiring your own boss? Okay, good. Okay. Well, that's that's encouraging. That's encouraging. Um, what I think that to bring the voicing of opinion outside of just the group that has been functioning together along a fairly straight line for some time until just recently is a way of doing things to bring some other voices. And I kind of thought you would want to bring in some highly respected community members that have some high level of education and experience. And so I, was, I came prepared. I brought one and I emailed her and she's actually said, yes, I'd be delighted. And that's Dr. Sarah Waterman who you know because she had applied for the open board seat. So there's some familiarity and comfort with her. So that's, but if we're not going in that direction, my suggestion is irrelevant. I think you, you may be sorry that you sent out a survey. I have had uh, uh, academic experiences in analyzing surveys. <laughs> it's not so easy. You will have the whole pot of soup thrown at you by everybody in town who knows it's happening and has some kind of opinion that may not even address what you're trying to ask them. And sorting that out and doing an adequate statistical analysis so you feel confident in what the opinion really was, not so easy. How about some people you trust that can actually participate in the process? The board has to make the final decision, five people, on who it is and offer them the contract. But in terms of an advisory role, um, and I had someone else in mind, but I'm not going to say names until they have agreed that they want to be part of it. So I'm waiting for a couple of other replies at that level or higher in terms of acceptance by the town and expertise in government at fairly high levels. And you know, if they say yes, I would pass the name on, and you can think about it. Um, and we must keep our eyes on what we're hiring for. I don't think that's been clear over the last several years, what role we're trying to hire for. If we're hiring a town administrator, let's make sure that that's defined. Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't like to see the town move to a town manager in any kind of haste because it involves redefining the political structure of the town. And we've got enough problems. We're not ready for that yet. 
we have to we have to distill the budget to get through. This stuff has to be done in an orderly manner. So um, I was thinking, what is a town administrator versus a manager? Well, my experience is in private business almost exclusively. I'm not good on committees. You know, you, you own it, you tell people what to do. It's much easier. Um, but a town manager is a CEO. A CEO, it's like the mayor. Under that structure, it is questionable whether you will still have a, a select board at all. Yes, you will. Um, you do. Under yeah. state statute. It's not a given, but it is a is. given. It's a given in the state in that state the state. town managing of a select board. I think I read that. I don't think that's correct. Well, I, don't believe that. I believe that is not correct. Um, you certainly do with the town administrator because the select board then becomes the CEO collectively. It's the strategic voice of the town. Uh, the town administrator is a C COO. It's the person that keeps the town operating. And it's the tactics rather than the strategy. So that's my thought. I'm, I'm puzzled by what you're saying, but it's easy enough to go check. Although the statutes are not as well worded and as complete as they could be. It, the language is pretty sparse in terms of talking about structure. So that's what I have to say. Judy, I want to make sure we don't get off topic here. I, really? It's the composition of this committee that I think yes. that's most important. Yes. I just don't want to. Hey, we'll take one. It's one a good more conversation, question. but I don't want to get into it right yeah. now. I guess there's two. Two. Okay, Carly. I think it's Kathy. Yeah, Kathy Chaffee. Yeah, this is Kathy Chaffee. Um, I just have a question for Travis on your survey. I guess I missed the last survey. Where was that posted? Um, and where are you? Where would you put this new one? Did I reference a prior Morristown survey? <laughs> no, I think if you were talking about the one you did in Essex. Uh, yeah, I spoke about a survey we had done in Essex. <laughs> oh, okay. So where would this other one be um, posted? I would assume Front Porch Forum would be one of the main venues in which that survey link could go out. I would guess the town website as well would be an area where that was advertised. You know, we could put something in the News and Citizen advertising where to go to complete the survey. Um, just offhand. Oh. I want to just let you know, I, I, I'm flabbergasted. I just asked a question and half the board laughed at me. Judy's smiling right now. I just asked a simple question and she's still laughing at me. I asked the question and it was not a stupid question and I don't expect to be laughed at. Thank I'm, you. I'm not laughing at you. Oh, okay. You did, you all did, thank you. Well, this will be our last question for the night. Hi. Thank you. Is this on? I can't yes, it is. This it's for the, it uh, the recording. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, first of all, thanks for taking questions from the public tonight. I know this is Can you tell us who you are? A complicated issue, yes. I'm Kristen Bogdell. Um, I live in Jersey Way. Um, and I I first thing I want to say is that I feel um, somewhat reassured that there is a sounds like a very professional process that you're trying to work out thanks to paula yes <laughs> don't listen to right. it um, and, and it sounds like that was not used in the past so that feels like an improvement to me that being said i do have um pretty grave concerns about the timeline that you all are having to deal with like other people have tonight I think um, if if we can take you at your word that you will um, amend the timeline if necessary, if the proper applicants don't show up, that is somewhat reassuring. I want to suggest that one of the things that would make me feel more reassured as a member of the public is if you were to contract or somehow um, pull in expertise <coughs> Um, for evaluating this kind of um, position. Uh, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns seems to maybe offer some of that from being on the website today. Um, it's clear that they will also run a professional um, uh, search um, for somebody who asks for it. And you may not feel like there is money or 
time for that. But if there is a way to get outside expertise, and I think that's really, really important, especially if you are going to try to go for this um, aggressive timeline. In particular, since the job description, or well, I have a question about, is this the official job description, or is this just an advertisement? And if so, is there a more fleshed out job description that is available somewhere? Because this seems inadequate for a job description, per se, that you would evaluate performance against. I, I don't know what you have in your frame. There is a formal job description. There is, is that the That's just an app. It, is it on the website? None of our job descriptions are on the website, but I could get you a copy of it. Okay, that, that would be great. I mean, I think that kind of transparency with these high-level positions actually would go a long way towards people um, understanding. I mean, at, in the college and university industry that I come from, very, very detailed jobs descriptions are public, are right there on the website along mm -hmm. with any advertising that's done. So I don't, I don't think it's a you know, an illegal practice or yeah. an unreasonable practice to expect. Um, and that could be done soon, and that might help. Um, but the main concern is that, um, I mean, all of us who are involved on your side and on our side, most of us are amateurs at, at, at the requirements of this level of job description. And knowing that there is expertise available to you to evaluate the qualifications of the um, candidates that come before you, I think is essential um, and also uh, would go a long way towards reassuring people. And that per those people would absolutely um, advise on how to involve members of the public in a way that is confidential and does not violate um, hiring practices. And Paul, do you want to speak to the VLCT engagement and such? Um, speak to, I mean, I can give you the location. So with regards to answering the Indeed, I have a call into Tyler at Indeed um, because there are certain criteria in Indeed. And I don't know if you use Travis. I'm going to go to you all yeah. the time with the we HR use it, stuff. Yeah. But there's, <coughs> so um, we often get applicants through Indeed. Um, and I find myself having to um, email them to see if they're, you're shaking your head yes, in the process of relocating because we receive a lot of out-of-state applicants. So you spend a lot of time um, communicating and trying to figure out if, because there is a lot of relocating going on right now. So you don't want to miss out on you know, great candidates. So I have been working with Tyler at Indeed to change some of the criteria and make sure that it's drilled down appropriately. So the ad is on there, it's just, uh, the, it's just paused. Um, and he was actually supposed to get back to me today. Um, let's just remember we got the notice from, or we all got the notice from Eric on Monday. So all of these ads were out on Tuesday. Um, and so yes, Thursday, I was working with Tyler. He's going to get back to me. I'm hoping that it will be on Indeed, but I can tell you where it is as of right now. Um, it's in the News and Citizen Star Reporter, Vermont Local Roads, um, the Vermont website, VLCT. Um, and I was going to do it on the ICMA, but it was a $600 it's expensive, fee. Yeah. It's super expensive. So I did speak to Eric, and we opted not to do that. If you would like me to do that, um, I'm happy to do that as well. So. Um, and I'm always open um, if anyone else has any suggestions as to where um, they would like me to advertise it. I have used the Burlington Free Press before. Um, so it's, you know, it's a hit or miss. Sometimes, I mean, we've used Burlington Free Press for a police ad before, and we didn't get any um, for the cost. I mean, it is expensive to even advertise in the news and citizens. So I'm always welcome to community members if you want to share other locations. Um, and I do want to address the timeline. Um, I think I've repeatedly said that if we needed to move that timeline back, this was just really trying to get stuff out there. I would never recommend that we rush this process. And I did um, speak to that as well. Yeah. Um, we need to find a great candidate, and that's the goal. Can, um, do we have any access to posting on LinkedIn? It's a trick, you know, because I don't know that we have a town account. They're mostly we personal don't have accounts. A town account, so. 
to me, that, that wasn't an area that I would go to. It's a great I mean, resource. Going through my, I mean, I guess I could. I mean, I thought about putting it out on my well, personal LinkedIn. I, was I haven't say, done it yet. Yeah, we can't, we can't, and I would check with everybody just to say, like I could put it out there, just a notice, not just saying this is available, go here for information or not at, you know. I don't, yeah. I mean, I don't think anything pre prevents anyone yeah. on the board, staff, or public from sure, sharing yeah. the job it's ad. A, it is yeah. a, a good source. And then seven days. Uh, Again, and I think that that's some of uh, the feedback yeah. is, you know, um, the cost as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want, I will spend as much money as the sub board tells me to spend on this. Um, I've just been very aware of our budget yeah. restraints. Of course. Um, Thank you. And so I, I did take that into consideration when I'm trying, you know, when I'm advertising. Um, I do <coughs> want to also rem remind everyone that this is the first time I've connected with mm -hmm. the select board. Um, so this is why this meeting is taking place, mm -hmm. is so that the select board, the HR department, um, and the staff who we are going to, you know, be um, <coughs> to the committee is working together um, and being transparent about the process. So, um, and could I ask I one more this question? Is what this is all about. But, um, since our, this. I'm sorry, I forget, forgot your name. Kristen. Kristen brought up the fact of the um, full job description. Mm -hmm. Do You're saying it's not currently, uh, like we can't put a link and have somebody link to, to read it. They have to, we have to get a request for I it. I can put it on that. I can um, send it to Judy and she can um, attach it to the um, job posting um, that we have. I think that would be, because yeah, I, I, I always I read full. I wrote it down to do that. Okay, thank you. the job description. Um, you know, I, and I should have, and, and so, my back, I should have nope. done that. Um, yeah, no, I didn't catch it. So yeah, I think you. I saw yeah. it in the highway ad actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Well, before you leave, um, yeah, is there a pro and con with posting it with ICMA? Six hundred dollars. Right. But it, I mean, no, but the exposure. Where's ICMA? Um, you know, the exposure. It's sort of I don't the know. National don't know, VLCT equivalent. Um, I don't know what the results. Kind of. I don't know that we would. We would. Um, have an increased applicant pool by using that, so I can't. I can't tell you. Um, I haven't used it, um, so I, I don't know if we're going to get a you know twenty percent increase in applications because of using that. So I can't. Are there I other job? The cost. Is it typically? I mean, do other municipalities post job? Uh, openings on yes. ICMA? At, at yeah. this level, yes. Mm -hmm. it, I mean. What ninety percent probably of town managers in the country are probably part. I mean, I'm making numbers up, but the vast right. majority of town managers in this country are ICMA members and have access to that website and, and right, these emails. It makes a lot of sense. Okay. To, I mean, I'm just one person. I have it dra it's drafted. I right. did not hit the submit button, um, but now I will hit the submit button. Well, I, everybody's in Do we need a formal motion approval for her to spend that money? I don't think that that's a part of tonight's agenda. So to okay. make a motion on something outside the agenda, I think would be, okay. but I think simply the direction, I mean, we're talking about hiring process rather than committee formation. So we're a little off target with it, but if you're giving Paul the indication that you would like her to use that, I don't need a motion, I don't think. I think she, you're telling her okay. the direction so in which you would like her to go on an initial site. But. I, I would advocate for that. I would as well. Can you say what? Tell us what those acronyms. I know. It's the, <laughs> the, it's the International City and County Managers Association. Okay. okay. I always forget what it stands for. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. So the ND posted. Hopefully, um, Tyler from ND will get back to me tomorrow, and that will be out there, and then I will put it on the ICMA as well. Can I just have a few more places? It is. Oh, go ahead too. Um, I did share it with Sarah. Yeah. So Paula shared it with me because I have access. I sent it to the um, the Vermont Clerks and Treasurers Association so that that could get out all to oh, municipalities. 
and I also sent it out to um, UniNet, which is the municipal yeah. one. And I know that people are seeing that because I got phone calls immediately. I saw it there. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, the Vermont UniNet was an awesome one. I was really happy to see it there because it's sort of a statewide distribution list for municipal employees. I mean, tons and tons and tons of municipal employees in the state of Vermont are on that list. That's that's where I first saw the job ad was it came to my work email in Essex because I'm part of that distribution list. So that was a great one. All right. So our next step is do we do we need a, a motion to go forward? Do we we've already discussed kind of how we want to step the hiring process. I Paula, do you feel like you have the information you need or are you missing something right now while getting leaving this committee or this meeting tonight? No. Like, do you need more information on what I, the composition is committee? I'm very happy to actually um, have, have this meeting um, because as of last week, I wasn't really, I was moving forward on my own and wasn't really um, sure what the expectations of the select board was. Yeah. So okay. now I'm clear. Um, so now I, I, feel, I feel good about moving forward. And um, again, if we have to move the, extend the, Deadline. I still feel like we should be hitting the targets with our questions and hitting our mm -hmm. targets with making those other decisions so that we are prepared at any given time as soon as we have a solid applicant pool. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm. I just want to say, you know, we've we've gotten some very good public input tonight, and and two of the areas that I think we've gotten very good input around and we've talked about it a lot we don't need to belabor it it's just if we need to take our time you know and right. you know, chris right. i think i think you said it well before mm -hmm. you know we're not saying that we are going to rush the process but uh, if we need to we can take our time and we can we can slow things down the other thing is if we should decide that we want public membership it was brought up i think ed you mentioned it tonight but uh we do have a pool of individuals who are very interested, and I want to say there was about nine, approximately, very interested in joining the select board. That's true. And That's uh, true. I could very quickly suggest a couple of names. I'm not going to right now, but I could too. That and highly so I, I think we, we've we've already done a lot of background. We've done a tremendous amount of background, probably more background than we would otherwise if we were to put out a request and, and meet with people. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's already there. I'm not it's sure those individuals want to be part of this, but my guess is at least a couple of them probably do. Yeah. So I just want to throw that out there. I know you weren't part of all those interviews, but the four of us were. and. Uh, so that there's there is some work that's already been done. And yeah. a, thank you. Yeah. For I think it's I think it's a good concept. I, I was going to say too. I'm I'm not comfortable with where we're at with the public engagement. You know, if we if we don't do this the right way, the new person's going to fail. You know, we can't we can't bring someone in here that the public's opposed to, and that opposition could be warranted or not. It could be because of a lack of belief in the process. You know, I think. We need to be careful about how we do this and the position we put the new town administrator in. You know, my I, I like your idea there, Don, as well, because you know we have we have vetted those folks. Those are people who are interested in being on the board. I think that's a cool concept. You know, and my head goes back as well to the possibility of a public presentation from a couple of finalists. Again, it's not ideal, but it, it does at least give the public the opportunity to to see these candidates and to provide some feedback on it. Um, and that way, you know, there is no expectation of confidentiality or at least being upfront with these candidates about how the process is gonna work and that that's part of it. Um, they can weigh that in their decision-making process. Um, you know, I, I think Ed made a really good point on the survey too. Um, if we get like a thousand pieces of feedback, are, are we gonna actually be able to vet that and break it down into, you know, the, sort of changed my stance on the survey. I don't know as if that's the best idea because I don't know as if we're gonna be able to, we're gonna get a lot of feedback and we're probably not gonna be able to break it down into any intelligible fashion. I um, agree, I agree, I Travis. Agree that, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, putting the public engagement aspect of this back out there, I think Don's suggestion about involving maybe intimately in the interview process, some of those candidates that we interviewed for the board um, versus a public presentation or some combination there too. I don't know if the rest of the board would be open to something around those lines. 
I, I do feel like we need to more actively involve the public or it's it's not going to go over well. And you have to remember that the five of us are the public too. So just Correct. be aware of that. Do we need to decide um, the whole committee process tonight? Or did we, was this primarily that we could get uh, direction for Paula, which I think we're good with, right? I was kind of thinking that's what we were going to do at least to, but... tonight, was decide on what the composition of that committee would be um, by way of a motion, but I don't know to get the so-called process started, mm -hmm. we're not certainly not going to get the details of this process all figured out tonight, but maybe, maybe we're not ready for that. Well, I mean, at some point we need to make a decision on the composition of a, of a committee. And yeah. is it going to be the same committee through the interview process, which would include department heads, select board, and potentially uh, community members? Um, I think that we need to make a decision uh, on how that's going to work um, so that we have people engaged in the process right from, <coughs> right from the ground up. And um, so, um, I was a, uh, I was an interviewee, not an interviewer, um, in that process. So um, if you're, you know, I guess the tough decision is is how do you approach the public participation? You know, um, do you open it up for people to, you know, ask for engagement, or do you just sort of uh, arbitrarily isn't a good word, but selectively, I guess, um, you know, pick and choose. Um, who you might like to have serve from prior applications for the select board. I mean, um, I do see that a little bit as a slippery slope um, um, that you're just discounting some people for other people. Um, not that they're not all good candidates, um, but um, you know, I think that uh, we, need to, we need to come to a viable conclusion um, either if not tonight. You know, later this week, whether it's a special meeting or whatever, but you're going to be gone as of Friday. You're gone, so we should do that as a full board. So yeah. you know, the players in place. I, I think that we need to make some decisions in, in so, this direction. So I think there's several slippery slopes, though. You know, the survey itself. If we do get that <laughs> all that information, it's going to be really, really tough for us to I, yeah. consolidate and collate all that information. Inevitably, we're going to we could leave things out, which causes a slippery slope. Asking for people that are interviewed that want to be part of this committee that that could be a slippery slope too, because we may get a lot of lot of interest. I do like the idea that we already have about nine names of people that have gone very much out of their way to be involved on this board be involved in the pro in this exact same process that we as select board members are going to be involved in. And we know a lot about them and we've vetted them and they've given us a ton of information already. Um, I, if I, I'm leaning in that direction if we're going to put public members on here I think we can get those individuals and rather quickly. What's the decision making process? Judy, we're going to sit here in public and do. If this I may thing. make a suggestion, because yeah. this is we're we're we're, we're spinning around. a lot of circles. Yeah. If you just tonight are able to form the committee structure, Monday night we'll add an agenda item to the business meeting, where you can then talk about the mechanics of how you come to choose. If you add two people to your committee, then how do you choose those two? But okay, we're idea. we're forty minutes beyond where you would set for a timeline. We have other business to attend to tonight. That's that would a good be nice. Idea. Get a motion about the hiring committee. I can make a motion that the hiring committee be composed of the five current select board members. Sarah Haskins, the town clerk. Tina French, our finance director. Jason Luno, our chief of police. Judy Alberry. Our administrative assistant, Kevin Barrows, our superintendent of highways, Paula Beatty, our HR director, and two additional individuals representing 
the community. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Well, uh -oh. does this in, is this including they're all on one committee as opposed to having potentially two committees? I think or we just need a second, second first, and then let's talk about that. I'll second it with the amendment. Tina Sweet, I think you said Tina French. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tina and Paula. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Never Tina. So, um, <laughs> thank you. I, I would suggest that we could, once we have the committee in place, we can decide how it's how it functions afterwards. How it works out. So, if we have, if that's the thirteen individuals that we want to have on this hiring committee, maybe as you've suggested, part of them okay. could do this part, and part of them could do the other. But I think. I think just to get us going, let's figure out who these 13 are, okay. if that's what we want to do. I think that's where we need to start. Okay. I, I agree. So just so we, we, we need to start. So we've done, it, we've done our discussion. Yes? I, I just so, want to be clear that it's the five department, it's our six department heads, the five select board, and then two. Um, that large. Two at large. large to be chosen. Okay. Yeah. Just okay. for clarification, Judy Alberry is not a department head, but she is oh, the administrative sorry. assistant to the. Yeah. Wasn't sure how to thank six, you. Six, six, how to, I six staff members. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was trying, yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank six, you how to yeah. properly say that. Discussion's over. Can I ask one question before you leave? Please. Very quickly, please. Thank you. Yeah, be real brief. If you could kindly send me an email of where all the ads are being placed for the town administrator, I would appreciate I'll, I'll send you an email, Tom. Okay, I'll, that. I'll and also, if I email you, if I email you three uh, 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 outstanding residents that could could help on your uh, uh, interview book panel, would you consider those three? We haven't limited anything, Tom. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, that, all right. I I have three outstanding people that that could be a, a great help to to the board on, on this election now leave me I'll add to you okay thank you hey, please please <laughs> slow down this is a wicked yeah jamie's talking thank you thank you thank you all right uh james brewster uh just quickly uh in regards or with regards to uh the slippery slope as it re pertains to selecting uh, community members. Um, I don't necessarily see it that way uh, because we, the public, didn't get any say uh, when it came to choosing you. Right. That happens all the time. We don't get the say. So I am perfectly comfortable uh, with the board making that decision. If you can make the decision on your own to select that person to fill the vacancy, you can certainly do that here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Okay. Motion is passed. Good. Okay. <laughs> so. so I move to go into executive session because I find the premature general public knowledge of pending or probable civil litigation or prosecution to which the public body is or may be party will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing its negotiation strategy. Second. Thank you all for coming. Oh, I need a second. I'll second. Motion by Don, seconded by Chris? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to go into executive session to discuss the pending or probable litigation or prosecution under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes to include Town Administrator Eric Dodge, Peter Jones, and Denise Trombley. Uh, second. We need a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 